Welcome to Tweety's Take. I don't usually look at the news on Sunday as that's a day of rest for me. But today, when I woke up and looked at the headlines, I saw this from Washington Post, which you probably already know about, stating, I just want to find 11,780 votes. Trump pressures Georgia's Secretary of State to recalculate the vote in his favor. Now, as this article was coming from Washington Post, I was very critical when I read the headline and thought, okay, what's the other side of the story and what does that hour-long call actually entail? Well, I highly encourage you to listen to it. It's in the description below. Set aside all thoughts on the matter. Set aside everything you've seen about it if you agree with a Washington Post article. And instead, listen to the audio, discern for yourself. I have a couple of clips that I want to play from it that are going to be pertinent to this conversation. And then we're going to look at CNN's side of it and how they responded to Trump's call in an absurdly childish manner. All right, so first, Washington Post framing. They're stating that President Trump is trying to find 11,780 votes, and they just included a little sound bite. What they don't mention is that previous Trump was talking about fraudulent votes, that they are looking for fraudulent votes. And if they find fraudulent votes, then those are going to decrease the count from Biden because they're illegal. Trump isn't looking to create 11,780 votes in the system, but don't take my word for it. Here's the audio. In uh, Fulton, where they dumped ballots, you will find that you have many that aren't even signed and you have many that are forgeries. Okay, you know that, you know that, you have no doubt about that. And you will find, you will be at 11,779 within minutes because Fulton County is totally corrupt and so is she totally corrupt. They are shredding ballots, in my opinion, based on what I've heard, and they are removing machinery uh, and they're moving it as fast as they can both of which are criminal fines, and you can't let it happen, and you are letting it happen. You know, I mean, I'm notifying you that you're letting it happen. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more that we have, because we won the state. So there you have it. Again, if you want to know more, please listen to the phone call. I highly recommend it. Now, another way that they're trying to defame Trump is they're saying that he's rambling. He's at times incoherent. He's consumed. He's desperate because he lost. They're making Trump out to be some madman on a rant who's trying to attack the governor. And that's exactly what they're saying. They're saying he's attacking him. He's trying to, to pressure governor in order to find these votes but it's good if governor stands up to him. I mean, the whole thing is ridiculous, especially when you listen to this part of the call, which they so conveniently left out. Let's play the tape. But we don't need that because all we have to do, Clayton, is find 11,000 plus votes. So we don't need that. I'm not looking to, to shake up the whole world. We won Georgia easily. We won it by hundreds of thousands of votes. But if you go by basic, simple numbers, we won it easily, easily. So uh, we're not giving uh, Dominion a pass on the record. I will no, say that. right, exactly. But we just don't, you know, we don't need we don't Dominion need because we have so many other votes that we don't need to prove it any more than we already have. You see, he is not trying to shake up the whole world. He's saying that he doesn't even want to look into Dominion voting machines. He doesn't even have to go there. He's saying, look, I just want to get these couple of votes out of the way because we know that these are verified. I've had accountants check them. I've had my team check them. These are verified stats that say these votes should not be there, that these were cast illegally. And then Trump says, look, all we want is to meet with your lawyers to create a time when we can sit together and go over our facts together to go over the data. But the representative for Governor Raffensperger says, we're not really willing to let you look at that data. Instead, we're going to allow you to speak with our lawyers between your lawyers so that our lawyers can tell your lawyers why your side is wrong. And, and that's that. These people do not have any transparency. They don't want you looking at the numbers. They don't want you to really find out what's going on. Instead, they want you to take their word for it. And everyone doing the fact checking, all the media, they're running interference so that people say, oh, well, the fact checking has been done. But I'll show you what the fact checking really is. It's just some teenager not really a teenager, but they're sure acting like it. Some teenager behind the computer typing up their personal beliefs without doing any investigative work. Let's look at this. All right, here's CNN's article, the 37 most outrageous lines from Donald Trump's call with the Georgia Secretary of State. This is written by Chris Saliza. 
I don't watch CNN, so I don't really know who it is. It just says that he's the editor at large. But from his writing, he seems to be very emotionally driven. And just remember, when you when you break up the full conversation, you're not really going to understand what these specific quotes are about. So if you want to understand the full context, listen to the call. All right, point one that he attacks. Trump stated, we won very substantially in Georgia. You even see it by rally size, frankly. We'd be getting 25 to 30,000 people a rally, and the competition would get less than 100 people. Prison reply. While I'm convinced, Trump has always been entirely convinced that having large rallies equals winning. Of course, even if Trump had 30,000 people at a rally, that's roughly 0.6% of the 4.9 million votes cast in Georgia this fall. Math! And away we go. All right, first of all, Trump is not saying that large rallies equals winning. Rather, he's saying you can tell by looking at the rallies. That's just one sign of many. There are signs that show that he won the election. That's one of them. Let's look at the rest. Point two, we have at least two or three, anywhere from 250,000 to 300,000 ballots were dropped mysteriously into the rolls. Much of that had to do with Fulton County, which hasn't been checked. Chris replies, I'm not sure what Trump is talking about here. This will be a running theme. My guess is that he is equating the entirely legitimate process of early votes being tabulated and included in the statewide total votes as being mysteriously dropped. Well, Chris, if you wanted to know what Trump was talking about here, maybe you should ask him specifically. Maybe you should reach out to him like an investigative reporter is supposed to do. Maybe you don't have the time for that, but I'm certain someone at CNN does, right? So there's one opinion. Anyway, on to number three. We think that if you check the signatures, a real check of the signatures going back in Fulton County, you'll find at least a couple of hundred thousand of forged signatures from people who have been forged. Chris just says there is no evidence for this claim and then links to another article. What is it? Ah, uh, yes, an AP fact check. And the AP fact check just takes quotes from Republican officials in Georgia. There's no sort of investigative work here. It's just asking for people's opinion. Someone says, oh yeah, there's no fraud here. And then they say, okay, there's no fraud. Fact checked. All right, number four, we'll skip that. Number five, but you also have a substantial numbers of people, thousands and thousands who went to the voting place on November 3rd who were told they couldn't vote. Were told they couldn't vote because a ballot had been put in their name. Chris replies, there's zero evidence for this claim. Really? Talk to the people who claim this. The closest I could find was back in September when Raffensperger announced that roughly a thousand people had tried to double vote. Oh no, really? Those thousand people who had tried to double vote? Who said that someone else voted in their name? Is that the people who we're talking about? Did you just fact check and link to the evidence? Thanks for doing the work for us. All right, so now the next couple, I'm not going to cover all 37 points that they go through because it, it's just ridiculous reporting. But number six, late in the morning, they went early in the morning, they went to the table with the black robe, the black shield, and they pulled out the votes. Those votes were put there a number of hours before the table was put there. So this is in reference to the video footage that was taken at the State Farm Arena in Georgia. I actually made a video that spliced the footage of the four CCTV cameras together. So if you want to see a full picture of what happened that night, then you can follow it at the link below. Anyway, to the statement that Trump made, Chris quotes the Washington Post where they say, it's all nonsense. Really? Now let's take a step back. Let's, let's look at the situation. Trump is saying, look, have you reviewed the footage? We saw what happened. They pulled out ballots from under the tables. What was going on there? And then the Washington Post just states, it's all nonsense. And Chris uses that as his proof that it's false instead of looking into the footage and saying, well, we broke down the footage and this is what you actually see. Instead, they are just stating their opinions again, and everyone should see this by now, but there are plenty of people who I've seen on Facebook, on the CNN websites, and, and everywhere else where they're stating, oh yeah, oh yeah, I agree with you. This makes sense. It doesn't make sense. They're not actually doing investigative reporting, and I'm trying to drill that in here. These people are just sitting behind their keyboards. They see the news headlines come at them, and they say, hey, I'm going to report this and I'm going to state what my opinion is. And I'm going to use all of these, these articles that I get from everybody else that, that are just stating their opinions too. But they know that people won't bother to drill into the links, they won't bother to look into everything, and they won't bother to do critical thinking. And that's what it comes down to. We need to be informed or else these people are going to steamroll us. And I think people have really been realizing that recently. Now, number seven, this is the last one that I'm going to cover, but I think this is an important one to really highlight how they attack Trump. He states, they weren't in an official voter box, but they were in what looked to be suitcases or trunks. Suitcases, but they're in voter boxes. The minimum number it could be because we watched it and they watched it certified in slow motion instant replay, if you can believe it. 
but slow motion, it was magnified many times over, and the minimum, it was 18,000 ballots, all for Biden. Chris states, this isn't true. See number six, where Washington Post says it's all nonsense. Also, slow motion instant replay. This is CNN reporting today, and this is exactly why I've never watched CNN in my life. Like, like really, I don't believe I've watched it. Uh, except for the time that my wife and I reacted to a video that they did. These people are so driven by their emotions that they're not willing to look at the video footage themselves. They're not willing to really actually take apart what's happening. And they just say, oh yeah, there's nothing suspicious there. What you're saying isn't true. And we're just going to go on our way. There's, again, there's no investigative reporting going on. And this is with 99% of the media that you see that's available to consumers. If you want to get out of this rut of, of terrible reporting, if you want to see what true reporting looks like, first of all, Epoch Times is really killing it right now, as well as NTD News. I know they're sister networks, so I highly suggest looking those up if you haven't already. Also, there are more and more truth seekers out there, aside from my channel, who are actually reporting the news how it is and, and really linking things together. So I'll give a couple of links in the description below because I highly recommend their channels. Anyway, that's all I wanted to cover today. Just listen to the Trump call, listen to the full thing and take out any bias that you have. And then you'll be able to see what really happened in that call. He's not making any crazy threats. He's really not putting criminal pressure on Governor Raffensperger, as people are stating. They're stating that because of this call, Trump is a criminal, which, which is absolutely ridiculous. But that's how it is now. People have just become so blind to the truth that when it's presented to them, they state, oh, you're a criminal for presenting that to us. That does not make sense. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my coverage of this. If you have any questions or anything you want to add, please leave it in a comment below. If you really enjoyed this video, please give it a like. That seriously helps to force this through the YouTube algorithm because they're not trying to favor my channel. Absolutely not. Also, another thing that really helps, and this helps a lot, is to share this video so more people can see this. While CNN, Washington Post, MSNBC, and all those big media networks are pushing their own narrative, let's push the truth out there and show people what really happened in that phone call. Anyway, thank you for watching. My name is Addison Tweedy, bringing truth to light. And this has been Tweedy's Take. And I'll see you next time. Yabashia.